What happened after Tony dumped you? Girl, I'm over it. I went from heartbreak to hate, 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 hate. Boy, Joy. What it is, Bob. Pasta. <laughs> what it is right now. <laughs> How are things, Joy? Well, I mean, they're all right, I guess. You know what I mean? It's 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 all over. It's up down. I know something about when you just said Busta just reminded me of Bismarck Key dying. It's it's a sad <sighs> time. It's a sad time. Uh, Bismarck Key was amazing. Uh, honestly, like I feel like he's a very maybe not the first because we did have the Fat Boys for a brief period of mm-hmm. time. Right, but right. like to kind of take hip hop and make it fun. Yeah. Like less less serious he didn't take himself seriously yeah yeah absolutely. and like and he like if you don't know bismarck he like literally human beatbox like anybody imitates has imitated him even as a teen he was on big hip-hop artists albums like he was doing beatbox for everybody and making sounds with his voice i mean he's amazing yeah and everybody knows oh baby you every white girl knows <laughs> every <laughs> not just white girls Every white person in America, yeah, for certain. It's th- it's that. That's and the one of his that they know. Oh, it's the one of his only. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would say you know what's probably funny hmm. is that generationally, that would have been our parents. Like we would have been. I was a I was a freshman in high school when that came out. So you would have been in junior high. Mm-hmm. So yeah. on popular radio, that would have been like the things oh, our yeah. parents were hearing. Mm-hmm. So all the Karens really did like that song. That and Baby Got Back. I know. And you know what they loved about that? Is that they weren't named Becky. <laughs> because in the 90s, Becky was Becky, <laughs> Becky was the uh, the oppressive. Yeah. Becky with the good hair and just, you know. <sighs> Take us back. Take it, you did. You took me back. Yeah. I'm like ready to get out my umbro shorts and. Oh, you're gonna get your umbro shorts, put on a cardigan, put a neon, neon, anything neon. Umbro. I was talking about that because I wore this acid wash shirt to work today, and somebody was like, "Oh, I really like your shirt. Like that takes me back." And I was like, "Takes you back? (laughs) You're 25." (laughs) Like when I was literally wearing all this acid wash (laughs) shit was like. Slits in my pants with shake your thing written on my ass and fabric marker. <laughs> fabric marker puff paint. <laughs> puff <No. laughs> with some Oh, do you remember with some uh, puff paint? With some spandex sh- multicolor spandex shorts underneath it. Stop it. Just okay. popping the neon th- yeah. No. Tell the people what we got. What tell them it's it's a monumentous day. Is that the right word? Monumental. Is it? Whatever, it's a day. Yeah, because we're starting a new series. Oh, we're starting a new series. Look at me like I'm Shit, I was like, and I had that whole thing (laughs) built up today. It was like, we're now in our third year of From Heartbreak to Hate, the podcast. So, yeah, so three years. Suck it, bitches, (laughs) for those that couldn't hang. Um, For those who thought they'd never make it. And we never did, but we're still here. You and I have different definitions. Right. We all have different definitions of success. Yeah, success is longevity. That's right. And as long as one person listens to us. Even though we've never made a dime, and as a matter of fact, it's cost us money, we are still here bringing the heat. The heat. (laughs) Anyways. It's the humidity is 100% in this room. We're bringing the heat. The humidity of it all. So. Tell the people what we're going to do. So we're going to do our our yearly thing. Last year we did the My Blank Life. This mm-hmm. year we're doing Why Is It Gotta Be mm-hmm. Whatever. Right. And so our first episode in that is Why Is It Gotta Be a Fetish? Absolutely. Pretty excited. Pretty exciting topic. I love things that Bring require a little research. Joy is a researcher. Like I feel like before the internet happened, Joy was in a, Joy knows what a Dewey Decimal system is. Oh, as soon as you said I'm a researcher before the internet, I got all excited. Yeah. You know, I remember the old library. Yeah. And like a yes, absolutely where you had to get you had to go to the little um shelving system, you pull out the drawer. Absolutely. Okay, find the right things. Mm-hmm. Listen. Use encyclopedias. 
And Pe- these kids don't know. They, they don't know. They haven't seen an encyclopedia. Do you remember how encyclopedias used to have the old English writing for like the F's and the S's? Would have like like the encyclopedias I had. I don't know if it's just me, <laughs> and it was <laughs> the green that. stamps that we had at our grocery store. But back in the day, you could get free encyclopedias by spending so much money in a grocery store. Ah. And I got this set that wasn't from the grocery store. It was from a yard sale. And so my set in the 80s and 90s was from the 50s. Wow. Okay. Nope. So things had, like the moon landing hadn't happened. So I couldn't I couldn't go to work school and be like, I don't know about a moon landing because it's not in my encyclopedia. <laughs> What's aeronautics? Like, Mine were a little more current than that. So that might be the difference. But nonetheless. Super nerd, definitely, definitely went through many an encyclopedia in my day. And I'm going to spin this into a transition. Okay. People have librarian fetishes. Yeah. The sexy librarian. Mm, It's a thing. It's a total thing. Do you think it's because it's not supposed to be a thing? Like one of those things that's like, this person is supposed to be like, Sorry for the term, but like mousy or quiet, yeah, it's very demure, serious. and like they're very about the rules of the quietness and mm-hmm. the decimal points of it all. <laughs> um, but I also feel it's a safe fetish, right? Cause oh, it's easy for it. Yeah, yeah, it's let's like um, beginner level. You know what I mean? That's fetishes you have when you're in school, right? You're yes, like, absolutely. I bet that librarian would be really sexy. I'm not. S- so much my high school librarian but but i also feel it's the kind of fetish for people who like love to brag oh i never read because those are people who've never met a real life librarian and i'm here to tell you in real life mm, it ain't like in the porn not even remotely no porn is not real life i think we all we've discussed this before um no sex lasts 20 minutes. Even porn sex doesn't last 20 minutes because they stop and they take breaks. Contractual union breaks. So and they clean out holes and they get things <laughs> re-cleaned up before the scene starts again right back where the <laughs> penetration. I love when you say they clean out holes. I just imagine somebody, all right, time to bust out the Swiffer. Uh, I got the, the, the wet vac back here. You know they got the ass blast 5,000 like I got in my shower. Just <laughs> ready. <laughs> Just ready to clean out any crevices and holes. <laughs> Fun drinking game, kids. Uh, take a drink every time you hear Bob say holes. <laughs> oh. We promise you'll be fucked up by the end of this Yeah, podcast. holes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's a light. I mean... Fetishes are fetishes, and I'm, we're not like making fun of fetishes either. We're oh, no, because no, everyone has their things that they like and that perspective. But we're just kind of we wanted to elaborate on it. Um, we talked about it briefly in another episode about sex, but like we really didn't um, discuss it because I don't think we were ready to come from it in a place without judgment. Right. So I th- here we are now, judgment free zone. Even though we completely just called librarian fetishes. A light fetish. Uh, that's not a bad judgment, though. Okay. I mean, it is a judgment. Uh, I think when you're trying to say we're judgment-free, what you mean is we're not negatively judging you for having fetishes. Correct. That's different. Uh, the whole idea of our podcast is that we judge things. And you just said whole. But I also said the drinking game was only when you say it, oh. but then you said it for us. Thank you. <laughs> See, it came full circle. Does it count but, if it's WH? Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's all the insta side, and I don't know how often you use the WH, but oh. let's pay t- anyway. Um, okay, but researching, right? Yeah. And I, I promised you that I had a rant. You don't know about it, Ooh. but and you know I, lo- I live for a rant. You do. Um, I did a major <laughs> eye roll mm-hmm. when I did my research. Uh, with the incognito tab, and here's why, kids. I don't need Google in the middle of my searching. Sometimes I'm signed in at work. I don't need them to start, you know, suggesting yeah. electro stimulation or some shit. Oh yeah, I'm no. On a Zoom meeting. That Thank happened to me with underwear. I was looking for like those w- moisture wick underwear, like you know, <laughs> that don't keep moisture yeah. in. 
and I did it on my like you know through whatever search and then I'm like scrolling through at work on Facebook and here comes all these oh, yeah. underwear with penises <laughs> VPLs banging things banging things banging <laughs> on my work computer <laughs> you're like oh shit <laughs> yeah like I am not interested. I am not interested. <laughs> Please send it to my home computer. Like, it's a race for how quick can you get to the X. Right. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. When I started my research, I, you know, I keep it basic because that's, that's the thing. People think they got to go real deep, real intricate. Mm-hmm. No, just start with basic. So I asked the Google Ace, all right, um, to give me the most common fetishes. Okay. You know what I mean? Like. What are the kids really doing out there? Somebody's gathered the data. I haven't. But quickly I became angered because I ran into my old enemies, Cosmopolitan Mm -hmm. and Glamour. Not L. Mm, Not L. And the the thing was that the two had written essentially the same kind of article a year apart. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Because most articles on the internet at this point are, you know, one person writes it and then it's rewritten six times. But... Like it reminded me of how horrible these magazines are and how basic they are and how they basically raise basic bitches. Like that's their whole goal. Um some offense to you if you subscribe to Cosmo and you're like past <laughs> the age of twenty five. Because if you're past the age of twenty five, what are you really doing? Like You're not trying to keep up on fashion trends. Pictures. You're not trying to be fashionable. No. Anyway. So they have, of course, the from A to Z list of kinks and fetishes you should know about and it's as vomit worthy as you think like it's really oh, no. like a is for age play and b is for bondage and c is for cuck holding and please go fuck yourself <laughs> i just i mean b is for bondage <laughs> come on <laughs> that's the thing. everything was super basic yeah and it was like when they got to x it was like Not an X word, because you couldn't find an X word, bitch. I'm sure someone has a fetish for xylophones. (laughs) Now that would be some shit. I mean, xylophones exist. They are real. They do. And they're important to some people somewhere. It's it's a weird fetish, because, like, I just imagine, like, with xylophones, people always kind of do the scale of them. It's basic xylophone. Oh, does it get deeper? I mean, you you can hit the xylophone with different levels of striking Uh to get different sounds from each children are learning secret things about bob's life (laughs) i I have a glockenspiel around here somewhere which is basically a tiny xylophone but anyway okay i got a glock you don't know me let's move on children (laughs) 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 but no i mean Yes, they listed a bunch of fetishes, but it just it just felt so dumbed down and yeah. so insulting. And I know that everybody knows not to get their information from there, but I was also offended that they were like the top results in the search. And they're going to be right. That's the thing, because they probably pay for it because they're from that Nande Coste, whatever the name of that company is that owns yeah, all the magazines. Con- Con Nast yeah. Or some shit. yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. So they like have all the money, right? They're yeah. like. Yeah. But anyways, okay. So now was there any th- that you were like, "What was is any that?" that I um, no. Let's see. Hold, I'm scrolling through like nylons, blah blah blah. There was one about urination. Mm. Okay, there was one that I was like, "Oh, I didn't know this because they had to get fancy for Q." Q is for queerophilia, which is a specific fetish for hands as opposed to queerophilia. So attraction to fingers. Great manicure. Why does it got to be queer? <laughs> Maybe that's not how you say it. So, don't be trying to get me in trouble. I mean, it could be, it should be like phalangel or so something or some kind of, <laughs> I don't know. It's got to be, it's got to be queerophilia. Okay. I mean, I, I default I to you because English is not my forte. So you're. Because I like a reading and a writing. You like reading and writing. You <laughs> like the Dewey Decimal System. I'm sorry. Let me stop. We're going to be more informative. Anyways, that one was a surprise. The yeah. word. I had never heard the word. But yeah, and that's, that's probably it, too, because everyone has, like, a foot fetish mm-hmm. or, like, 
I just remembered this. Oh, oh my God. Why did I have not told you this? But it's perfect for this episode. Somebody asked me to do like put my feet on their foot fetish Instagram. Really? Mm-hmm. And are you going to do that? Uh, you know me. I do everything that, that anybody offers me. Absolutely. Um, but the problem I had was that some of the other feet on this side. I mean, I have cute feet. Meh. Ish. Mm, whatever. They're pale. They're the palest part of me. Um, but <coughs> some of the other people's nails had grown like no, over their toe and I was curling I down. I can't. So I, I don't. I don't want to be like. I don't like. You know. I don't want to do it because someone didn't clip their nails before. But you know me. If I'm gonna be on this foot fetish Instagram, I'm gonna have my nails buffed and shine. Right. You're and gonna I'm going to do the most. I'm going to do the most because Obviously. I want the most likes because that is what my entire existence is. Likes, hearts, follows, fans. Don't need friends. I need fans. That's why we do that's why I do this now. Um <laughs> so I I'm thinking about it. Um but it's also called Toes Are Us. <laughs> Not everybody's going to see those same feet I'm talking about. Um but yeah, just I just forgot that was this past weekend. We had we had already planned this podcast three weeks ago, so right. that was not part of it. So um, it just happened into your just life. Just happened into it. One one of the I guess a fetish that I find extremely interesting. I I don't have this fetish, but I find it extremely interesting is sploshing, where people like women like in bikinis will like sit on a cake. Or they'll, like, splash food on themselves. And it seems to be a very Anglo, like, British a fetish. I think the term even is a British term. But, like, um, like that's interesting to me. Because, like, we'll talk. I'm, I'm going to bring it up and I want to talk about the fetish that I, I intersected with. Um, without naming, without shaming. Right. But it's just where the catalyst that is the thing. Right. I think that's the thing for me with any fetish um, that that I don't have is kind of that question, how did this start? Like, how did you know no, this yeah. was the thing you were into? Did you happen on an image or like, yeah, where is it born? Yeah, because I feel like a lot of things now that exist because there's fet life for a website for fet people with fetishes. And like, I've gone to that website and like looked at it before and it's 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 a lot. Like there's so much terminology that I am unaware of. I really wish we would have got a fetish expert for this episode. But there's so many terms and there's like percentages of what you are that you list out on this site. But I feel like a lot of those types of things have are things that are known because of interwebs. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. access to those alternative lifestyles or alternative fetishes because some of them aren't really a fetish for sex. A lot of fetishes have nothing to do with sex. Like it's a lifestyle, like adult babies, like different mm -hmm. types of things like that, where it's kind of just more of a doing thing than like experience having these life experiences. So yeah. um, I feel like a lot of those are, but then uh, some things it's like, there's gotta be something. I mean, I Google everything. You Google everything. I mean, Absolutely. I Google everything. I don't care. Like, I could be sitting at work and some weird shit pops in my head, and I got to know. I got to know. Absolutely. Right there. And the answer's right there. It's all there for you. And so, like, I feel like any type of the fetishes, um, like this, the specific one that I came encountering with. Yeah, I've um, been waiting. <laughs> so I'm quiet. So... I recently met a gentleman that enjoys uh, being punched in the stomach, um, which, because I do everything, um, I oblige. Um, at the same time, I'm like sh making sure that I'm not being, you know, abusive in nature. I'm afraid because I'm also an, ab you know, was an abused child, so violence like that scared me. Um, to the point where I was like thinking that I didn't want to leave, you know, I didn't want to be too hard. I didn't want to leave marks. I didn't know. But um, it was to the point where the oxygen was being pushed from his body. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
it was just it was very interesting because I did not um I'm like how did you find that out? Right. Because his arousal point was because of that. So it was like So and you know me, I will develop a fancy story in my head, like a backstory that is not any even remotely true. Right. But I guess so my question, I will not develop this backstory for him but my qu- my thought would be do you think that he got punched when he was an adolescent like a preteen because that's about the right time right? yeah everybody gets punched once at least you get if punched? not you should have well, been <laughs> i'm not condoning everybody getting punched i'm saying i'm saying <laughs> people need to get punched because they learn like life li- a life a lot of life lessons that way <laughs> I'm saying it's when uh, humans are going through a lot of hormonal changes and there would be more going on with a man's penis. I don't have one, but I'm guessing that if you end up getting punched in, uh uh-oh, accidental, er, you know, erection, and you're like, oh, maybe. Yeah. And something links in your mind because there's power in the mind. So is it also because you make this link early on that – the two maybe weren't necessarily related, but now in your mind they are. Mm-hmm. So, like yeah, imitates. And I don't, I don't want to put him on blast, but I know that in the in the initial conversation, it was it was like, "Hello, I have recently found out that I enjoy this. Would you, you know, straight out the gate? Yeah, it was very, um, which I enjoy straight. F- I mean." Yeah. I mean, my I my my grinder app says I I my kink is short direct messages, so and, and that is obliged. the truth. <laughs> and he obliged completely. It was a paragraph, but it was still there. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I felt that it was very interesting as I do um, enjoy bondage, mm-hmm. um, in the dominant sense. Because most people wouldn't say I was a dominant personality. <laughs> And get through that <laughs> shit. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Oh, when you love to lie to yourself. I do love to lie to myself. But um yeah, but I feel like even that is like super light on the fetish spectrum. It is. I mean, I do is. enjoy getting choked a little too. But you know what? Who doesn't? Well, I've never tried it. And it's another one of those that I have questioned. Yeah. Like because does it start because you see it in a porno mm-hmm. or does it evolve from <laughs> you're, you're like this is my life story <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh you know what i mean or does it like start with hair pulling and then somehow evolves to there because i i don't think i think somebody might assume that it comes out of a traumatic place but i don't believe that that has to be the case at all so no and i think this i think that's where like the intersectionality of porn in the real life happens Mm -hmm. is that you start seeing things in porn. Obviously uh, the generations following ours were easily had porn at an earlier age than we did. I mean, I would not even have, I don't know if I just never assumed gay porn didn't exist, but like at the same time, like, I would go to gas stations and there would be like porno mags for women Mm -hmm. and porno mags for men. So I knew that I would just buy porno mags for men or women. Mm -hmm. And then I would get to see what I wanted to see. But at the same time, like I never thought that there were gay porn magazines. Like I, and I didn't think that there was gay porn. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that was a heterosexual, like that was because I felt so isolated in being a queer person that I would not think that would be a, a sellable mainstream situation. Right. Well, and also not growing up in a big city, right? right. Like yeah. if you had grown up in the city of Chicago, in New York city, you'd probably be like, well, of course it doesn't just got to go to the right corner. Absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. Access is a complete different situation, but huh. so yeah, I mean, and the thing is like, if you don't go out and start choking people tonight, folks um there are proper ways to choke people um because you should actually look into that i'm not going to get into the science behind it but there's a wrong way to do it and a couple of right ways to do it 
And so we need to make sure you're doing that correctly. But you're not going to get into the science? Oh. Science, 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 science. I'm not. Because okay. it's a lot. And we're getting close to the end of this. So oh, right, that's fair. I just wanted you to use the sound. Yeah. And I wanted to just say that I have fetishes just to kind of say that. Because I don't know. I think everybody does, whether you think you do or not. Maybe yeah. Maybe you do something that you feel is super calming. And maybe it is. But... 20, 30 years ago, yeah. <gasps> people would have clutched pearls. Can we get into, um, oh, we can do, you know, whatever length of time, but fetishizing people. Mm. So that's a whole nother situation that where um, people are like, I mean, we used to, we were, you know, we grew up in gay club culture mm -hmm. where there were slang terms for anybody that liked Asian people, there were pe slang terms for people who liked uh, Latinx people. So there was all these little slang terms for them, which, thank God, have been like removed from the vernacular of gay people. But um, probably not everywhere. Probably not at market days in Chicago. But um, it's there's a whole fetishizing like a person of color, mm. and. Um, and body sizes, too. And body sizes, too. Because, honestly, like, I've talked about that, I believe, on the podcast. As a larger guy, like, um, you know, I'm called a chub, which I feel is worse than calling me fat. Um, and it's just, like, I've been with partners where they've told me how much they love, like, my fat. And just, like, and it sounds like when you're talking about something even though you really enjoy it to a person who that part of their body they've hated their entire life like it's not a turn on mm -hmm. like you know we've talked about that before there was a guy who was thought he you know said he was really attracted to me the way I was and blah 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 blah, blah. and like in my fucking head I'm like no because I don't like the way I look you know yeah it is one of the basics I would say uh, this is a little separate because obviously fetish size, fetish, fetishizing someone. Yes, but go with me. Uh, is different than in a f having a fetish, um, a good one. Yeah. But to make sure that you have consent regardless. So even in how you're talking to somebody, mm -hmm. just because it turns you on and it, you know, it's your gig, does not mean right. it is theirs. And even the Satan basis. needs consent. To come into your body. <laughs> so that's all I got to say on that. So if you don't use consent in your daily life, you're worse than Satan. I do not consent you do not to consent. allow any ghosts to fuck me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I just uh, wanted to bring that back up. Yeah. I don't know if it well, it ghost fucking is. Is that a fetish? Like, it was a while ago, and I just wanted to renew my it was claws. was a high time ago. Yeah. Was it, two, it was two years ago. Was almost. it two years now? Uh -huh. Before the world ended? Okay. Yeah. Because um, my unsuccessful EP came out a year and a half ago. <laughs> and the remix was on that. Um, <laughs> so, um, is, but is, ghost fucking's not. That is. Is it a fetish, though? It is. It was when I did my more research after I got mad. Your morbid more research. <laughs> when I continued my research. That was listed as one of them, like people who have like this insane sex life with ghosts. <sighs> but see, I don't, I don't feel you like that is a fetish. You don't feel crazy. I don't, because like that would be like me saying I have a male fetish, <laughs> right? Okay. Mm. Mm. Are, are you gonna say something about it? <laughs> are you gonna <laughs> tell everybody about me? Because, because the difference is that most people don't assume that ghosts are real. Right. Men are very real. So it's not like they're fucking man. horribly real. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're the worst we're thing. Not we're not judging. We're, we're judging human. We're if judging you human. Be with a man. That's your choice. You'd be a man. <laughs> be with a man. But I think that's why ghosts could qualify as a fetish. Because, well. The majority of people are not on board with the oh. real. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm saying is the difference. 
Mm-hmm. I understand you don't agree. Not, if not no, I just, agree I'm just not. I mean, like, not. you know, I, I had that one person tell me that one time that <sighs> his fetish was cannibalism. Uh, and that's kind of like a that has an end point <laughs> right it does it's um not so not i didn't i didn't ask and you've seen the pictures of the dick covered in ketchup and mustard in a hot dog bun <laughs> and um I but the thing is like <sighs> is it just an offset of like actual cannibalism because cannibalism is kind of an infinite it has an ending right mm. like you're going to either lose a limb in which you, you have to go without a limb that's been eaten by somebody else or you're dead so i don't know if cannibalism is just like a a fetish like pretending to be cannibals that's what i would think more right like <sighs> gotta be but what do we know? We didn't call an expert. We didn't call, we didn't call an expert, and I didn't go any further because I just didn't know. And, like, some things I will definitely entertain. Um, things involving eating things, I don't. That goes for shit, too. Got it. 